Greetings from Savvy Layman. Let me do a quick recap to remind us where I ended the video on Precision Boost Overdrive. Therefore, if using Precision Boost Overdrive 2, which I recommend for the vast majority of Ryzen desktop users, and you are happy with your temps and boost clocks, you can stop tweaking the settings right now. Curve Optimizer feature lets us optimize the voltage to frequency curve. Who would have guessed, right? I need to warn you straight off the bat, this process is pretty time consuming and perhaps a bit frustrating. I don't recommend it for critical systems where uptime is too valuable. The thing is, your computer may reboot unexpectedly a couple of times until you find that equilibrium where undervolting meets stability. I will show you two ways of using Curve Optimizer, one lazy way and another hardcore way, which may yield better results in the end. Can you imagine spending a few hours fine-tuning your voltage to frequency curve only to see marginal improvements? Yes? That's my boy! Continue watching, my friend. What's going on here? Though we could observe measurable performance boosts when enabling PBO, the stock voltage to frequency curve set by AMD is not ideal. The reason is the curve needs to work for all CPUs of the particular SKU at all times, so AMD can't push it too aggressively. That leaves us space for us enthusiasts. With Curve Optimizer, we can let Ryzen CPU boost higher within its PBO limits, but with less voltage. Less voltage provides us with more wattage as well as temperature headroom, so the CPU can clog higher in the end. Curve Optimizer can be found in the BIOS within AMD overclocking section under Precision Boost Overdrive. Please note it is missing in AI Tweaker menu on Asus motherboards, so go to the Advanced menu instead. Since AMD applies way too much voltage with their stock curve, it would be foolish to use the positive curve optimizer sign. Therefore, always use the negative sign. The magnitude range goes from 0 through 30, and it determines by how much the operating voltage is shifted in the voltage to frequency curve. I will refer to this attribute as offset. For the record, each step is equal to 3 to 5 millivolts. The lazy approach is to choose the all core mode. Yeah, it may take a little less time to set up, but you may never be able to reach the perfect results this way, because each core is a bit different in terms of silicon quality, and for that reason, AMD uses a slightly different base curve for each core. The whole point of shifting the curve is to identify the maximum negative voltage offset where CPU is still stable. The tricky part is that you always need to test each individual core for stability, which is very time consuming. Fortunately, we have a little big helper called Core Cycler, which is a PowerShell script developed by Spoon. Link to the project can be found in the video description. Core Cycler, as the name suggests, cycles through individual cores while running Prime95, Ycruncher or ADA single-threaded workloads. It also suspends the running workload every now and then, so the core would cycle through idle clocks as well as boost clocks. Of course, it is recommended to run as many iterations as possible across all cores, but let's be realistic. 3 to 5 iterations of Prime95 huge numbers are usually good enough. With the all-core approach, it is wise to start with a modest negative offset of 10 and then see if all cores are able to complete core cycler workloads with no errors. If this is the case, you can even try to further increase the negative voltage offset as long as the next core cycler iterations run flawlessly. On the other hand, if an error is thrown, decrease the offset by one point. This process applies to the per-core approach too, but in that case, you need to decrease the voltage offset only for the core that threw the error. Please note that with per-core undervolting, some weaker cores are most likely able to work with a negative offset of 20 or even 30. Depending on how much time you have for this exercise, I would probably start with a bold offset of 20 to 25 and start decreasing from there. Sometimes, your undervolting may be way too aggressive and your PC simply reboots unexpectedly. This can happen even when the system is idle. If you encounter a reboot, launch Event Viewer and search for WHEA logger errors. 
it's best to create a custom view because you'll likely need to come back here a few times. Just repeat what you can see me doing on the screen. Yes, that silly drop-down list doesn't support search, but it's a one-off activity, so whatever. We are interested in processor-related fatal hardware errors. If you see one, you know one of your cores simply couldn't sustain the desired frequency at the specified voltage target and the system panicked. If you went with the all-core approach, just decrease the negative voltage offset by one point the same way as before. But if you applied a per-core offset, you need to figure out which core to decrease. Processor API CID in Event Viewer Log Entry tells you which thread was involved in the crash. In my case, it was the thread number 0. It's the very first core, mark 0 in the BIOS. Threads with API CID 0 and 1 stand for the first core, 2 and 3 for the second core, 4 and 5 for the third core and so on. One more thing. You are less likely to encounter WHEA errors or crashes when you increase your CPU LLC settings in the BIOS. I recommend level 3 for ACES motherboards, level 2 for ASRock, mode 4 for MSI and high for Gigabyte. LLC helps the CPU deal with the so-called voltage drop, but I don't want to go down this rabbit hole at the moment. Perhaps I can make a dedicated video on this topic one day. Just don't max out the LLC for your daily system, because it could hurt lifespan of your CPU on the long run. If you are happy with your final curve optimizer offset, you may want to leave CoreCycler running overnight to be on the safe side. CoreCycler even lets you customize the number of iterations, algorithms used, and many other options by editing its configuration file. I literally spent hours tweaking the voltage to frequency curve on my two PCs. The most exciting achievement came from my Ryzen 7 5100X where the best cores can now boost up to 5050 MHz. Of course, the CPU cannot sustain these clocks for longer than a few seconds, but it is an impressive gain of extra 200 MHz nonetheless. Please note, this CPU is a silver sample in terms of silicon quality, so your mileage may vary. Why don't we have a look at what performance improvement I gained with my Ryzen 7 5800X as well as Ryzen 5 5600X and selected benchmarks. Please note, I went with 1080p resolution with the lowest quality settings for games. Folks, I warned you all. I mean, there is a measurable performance improvement across the board, but it doesn't come cheap when it comes to invested effort. If you followed my instructions, persevered and succeeded, I welcome you to the club of true PC enthusiasts. In a future video, I'm planning to replace the existing all-in-one liquid cooler, which has a 240 mil radiator, with a more powerful one, which comes with a 360 mil rad. I want to explore if the extra temperature headroom can push performance even further. Stay tuned and have a nice one.